Leading pediatric health groups are declaring a national emergency in children's mental health. They're setting the toll of the pandemic on top of challenges that already existed. So joining us to talk more about this crisis and what we can do to help is Dr. Katzenstein. She's with Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. So first of all, explain why this is happening now about a year and a half into the pandemic. And truly, we were in a mental health epidemic before the pandemic was even in place. And so prior to the pandemic, we knew that mental health was a significant concern for our kids. We knew that we were already experiencing difficulties with access to care and that our mental health rates were increasing. As we've continued through the pandemic, we have continued to see the toll taken on our kids in terms of increased stress and anxiety, increased substance abuse, eating disorders, suicide attempts, suicide completions, with suicide now being the number one cause of death for our, our kids 14 to 17 years of age. And so as this data comes together, the groups came together to really continue to advocate for the mental health need across the country. And talk a little bit about what you're seeing in your, your own practice with these patients. What's most concerning to you? Most concerning is the stress and anxiety that our kids are in, as well as those escalating rates, as I mentioned, of eating disorders, of substance abuse, of depression and suicidal ideation, and the access to care. We continue to struggle with having enough providers to be able to meet the needs of our kids and adults. So what can parents do? What should they be watching out for with their kids? For parents, it's most important that you are taking time every day to check in with your kids, see how they're feeling, know what's going on in their lives. If you start to notice changes in mood, changes in sleep or appetite, engagement in previously enjoyed activities decreases or changes in how well your child is taking care of themselves, that activities of daily living, and those are all symptoms or signs that are really indicative of a mood concern, like depression, anxiety, stress. So if you're starting to see those things, not only talking with your kids, but to potentially working to find a provider to provide additional support as well. And I know it can be hard for some parents to talk about this with their kids. Do you have any suggestions about how to bring up that conversation? One of the great things you can do as a parent, first thing is tell me about your day. So let's not make it a question. Let's make it a response. Tell me how you're feeling. Are you concerned about COVID or are you concerned about mood or depression in yourself or any of your friends? If you can ask just a few questions every day, gather that information, we can have a good understanding of how our kids are feeling and if we see any changes in that. And you were talking about the lack of mental health resources, specifically in the state of Florida. What can we as a community, schools, what can we do to help our kids? This is a fantastic question, a great opportunity for all of us to continue to bring mental health to the forefront, to recognize the importance of mental health, reducing the stigma, understanding that mental health, physical health, and our overall well-being play a role, um, talking to our legislators, our healthcare providers, our teachers, our educators, so we can continue to make mental health a priority for everyone so that we can have the healthiest kids, adults possible. And this declaration that um, children's mental health is at this point a national emer emergency just came out this week. What is the importance of that? And what do these leading pediatric groups hope this will accomplish? These leading pediatric groups came together to advocate for mental health, to bring it in front of the legislature, to declare this national state of emergency so that we can do a number of different things. But important to all of that is increase funding for mental health and increase the funding available for increasing our number of providers, access to care, and again, making sure that it's on the front of everyone's mind as we continue through the pandemic and on the other side as well. And is there any particular group of kids that is really struggling with mental health right now? Any of our children and adolescents who prior to the pandemic already had mental health concerns, we've seen those worsen throughout the pandemic, as well as um, an interesting increase for kids who have had um, difficulties accessing school and curriculum, difficulties having continual social contacts, and for any of our kids that may have experienced financial loss in their families or job loss or housing changes as a result of the pandemic as well. And you know, this report also talks about kids who may have lost a parent uh, or a guardian because of COVID-19. How can we help them? 
great opportunity for all of us to come together. Remember that this child may be still grieving and may have trauma related, of course, to the death of the family member, as well as everything surrounding the pandemic. So being trauma informed in our understanding, understanding that our kids have had different experiences and the reactions may dictate, um, you know, where those feelings are coming from, but then also making sure that we are seeking out the appropriate resources for them, whether that be grief counseling or working with a therapist or another provider. And again, advocating at the federal level, we need to increase these funds so that we can increase the number of providers. Doctor, is there anything else you wanted to say about the mental health of kids at this point? I think you covered everything. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your insight. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much for your time.